Hey, what's up and welcome back to the 12 Startups in 12 Months Challenge. My name is Kevin Love, aka K-Love, and over the course of 2023, each and every month, I'll be picking one startup or side hustle idea to build and grow. Probably have some winners, probably have some losers, but that's okay because we can learn from the losers uh, as well. So in the last video, we went over some research for uh, uh, January's idea and, and some keyword research as well. Uh, I decided, if you've been watching, you know that I've decided to sell coloring books on Amazon for the first startup. I landed on the idea of doing mandala coloring books. So mandalas are, are there's uh, circular pieces of art, and um, we'll see some examples here in a little bit. So in today's video, I want to talk about, well, how exactly am I going to create these coloring books? Uh, I can't illustrate them myself. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Maybe I'll learn in the future, especially if this idea takes off. So since I won't be illustrating myself, I want to go over the two methods I did use to create to create this first coloring book. The first method, which is my favorite, is using AI to create the images for the coloring book pages. With AI, I know that I'm going to be getting a unique original image every time. The second method that I used is going to image sites such as Pixabay and Vecteezy and simply downloading mandala images from there and inserting them into my book. Um, so these, with these sites, uh, you can download the images for free, and you're you have the like the full rights to them. So you can use them for personal use, or you can use them for commercial use. So you can add them to products that you're selling, like coloring books. Next, we'll talk about actually putting the coloring book together along with some intro pages and a cover and finally we'll talk about uploading the book to amazon kdp and listing it for sale so let's dive in so i realized that for my very first coloring book ever that i wanted to keep it as simple as possible now, do I want it to be high quality? Yeah, of course. But you know, you look around at some of these coloring books for adults, and they're super intricate. The image covers the whole page, and I want to get to that point, hopefully soon. But for the first one, I re I really just wanted to go through the process once of creating the book and getting it listed for sale on Amazon. So if we take a look at this one here as an example, take a look inside. And we've got the cover page there, copyright, this book belongs to, and see how they've just got the, man, uh, the mandala front and center. I used this as inspiration for my book in order to keep it simple. Now, simple doesn't mean crappy or low quality. We know this seller is making money off this book. Uh, first off, they have 3,595 ratings. And if we scroll down to the product details, we can see their bestseller rank in books is 
5,758. That is very low, and the lower, the better. And if we take that number, the BSR, and we put it into uh, an Amazon book sales calculator, they don't like the comma, we'll get rid of that. And we change this to book, calculate sales, but Format. That is the request to perform it. I didn't think they liked the comma. Hmm, let's try and refresh. Put that 6758. Look, there we go. So they're estimating, remember this is just an estimate, but they're estimating that this seller is selling 587 copies of this coloring book per month. Now, if you multiply that by the sale price of $9.99, you get $5,864.13 per month just from this one book alone. If we look at this seller's seller page, we can see that, that they've got 224 books for sale. Um, they've all got a nice number of ratings and reviews. So we know this person is making bank by selling coloring books on Amazon. So let's take a look at the AI method I used to create these images. So here we are at Dream Studio. Dream Studio is a product of an AI company called Stable Diffusion. With Dream Studio, just like with ChatGPT, which we looked at in a previous video, you enter a prompt down here, and, and instead of returning text like ChatGPT, Dream Studio will generate images. Now I'm still learning how to write really good prompts, um, but for this project, I figured out a way to reverse engineer the process. So if we jump over here to lexica.art, we can search for an image. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a black and white mandala uh, coloring page. And as you can see, Lexica is based out of uh, stable diffusion as well. And it's going to give us some images if we hit search. And then you see we've got these images uh, of black and white mandalas that other people have created. Now, if we pick one, let's just say, for example, this one, or let's see, let's go with this one. So this is where it gets interesting because we can see the prompt that the person used to create this mandala image with AI. So I'm gonna copy that prompt, jump back over to Dream Studio. Enter it. And see what I get. And even though I'm entering the same prompt, the results are going to be unique and original because every time you enter it, the AI generates something different. So there's no chance that I'm going to be, uh, uh, you know, copying this other person's work. So it looks like we're just about done here. There's one that's still trying to finish right here. It's kind of blurry, not sure why. 
But then we have three different examples. And let's say I wanted to use maybe this one. Can download that. Um, just for fun, I'm going to put that on my desktop for easier use. Call that Dream Studio 1. So now that we have that image, oh, uh, back to Dream Studio. They, there are only uh, a certain number amount of credits. I forget how many you get for free. After that, you have to pay for it. So I just used it until my free credits were up. And then I came over here to Deep AI and did the same thing. So image generator, click there, and then enter the same prompt. See what we get. Oh, actually, here you have to choose a style, and I chose this one because it's black, uh, black and white lines, and that's what we're looking for. So then generate. It's going. It's thinking. It's going. It's thinking. So there's an example, and you can download that. You can also hit generate again and see what else it comes up with. Going, going, going. And there's another one you can download. So after we have generated a few mandalas from AI tools, what we want to do next is upscale the image. So we want to go to, let's see, where is it? Oh, here. So you, you can just do uh, an image, or I'm sorry, a Google search for image upscale, and, and you'll get uh, a bunch of results. This was the first result, so I went with it. So upscaling just means we give the image a quality boost, uh, especially since this is a print project. We want the highest quality images possible for printing. So I'm going to go over here to upload image. And then desktop, and this is the one we got from Dream Studio. Open that. And it's working, it's working, processing, processing. Okay. 2x, let's see. Which one should be down one? Enhance quality. I'm just going to go with this one right here. And take a look at it. That's looking pretty good. Right? I mean, it's not blurry. This is something we could use in a coloring book. So now let's take a look at method number two that I use to create these images. Well, uh, in method two, it's more like getting the images rather than creating them. But uh, anyway, if we go on over here to Pixabay, this is uh, one of those image sites where you can download Im images for free and use that uh, for personal or commercial use. So let's uh, search um, black and white mandala. And see, we have a bunch of options here. A lot of these would be great for a coloring book. The reason I used this method was to just sort of fill out uh, some of the rest of the pages. I knew I wanted to do at least 50 mandalas. So 
Uh, I used up free credits on AI sites and then came to Pixabay and uh, Factizy. So we can do the same search, black, oops, black and white. Mandala. And here we have more. So you would do the same thing. You would pick the ones you want, like this one, for example. Free download. The 1920 by 1896 size is going to be fine. Download that. I'm not a robot. Download. And we have that. And then I would go back and upscale these ones as well. So now we've got our mandala images. How are we going to construct them into a book to sell on Amazon? Well, let's take a look at that. So what I wanted to do originally was use Canva. Canva is a very up and coming, very popular graphic design software, uh, software uh, totally web-based, and they have a very um, generous and robust free version. And the free version uh, uh, would have been all, all that I needed to create the book. The problem I ran into was when I was up uploading my 50 mandala images, some of them were over 25 megabytes in size, which is the limit per image in Canva. So I had to scratch the Canva idea and come over here to Google Docs. So the first thing I had to do in Google Docs was set up the page size. So if you go here to file and page setup, they have some basic sizes, uh, obviously the standard eight and a half uh, by 11, uh, of, uh, along with a few others, but it didn't have the size I need. So I, ne I need to go up here and install an extension called Page Sizer. So you would go to Add-ons, Get Add-ons, search for it, Page Sizer, and then here it is. So I did that. And then you can go back up here to Extensions, hover over Page Sizer, click set page size. And the reason I need uh, um, a little bit different of a size is because we're using what's called bleed. Um, so the black pages that are on the other side of the mandala, the black goes all the way to the edges and that's called bleed. There's no white space uh, around the border of the black. So Amazon tells us that our document size, if we're using bleed, is uh, going to be 8.625 by 11.25 inches. Now, that's if we want the standard 8.5 by 11 size that we're going for. So this, the 8.625 by 11.25 is going to be trimmed down to eight and a half by 11. So I did that. And here you see uh, a sort of a title page. So we got the, the title of the book, the, the subtitle, uh, a few mandala examples, Copyright, and then we've got copyright info here, logo, 
And then a this books belongs to page. So if you're giving this as a gift, or even if you're just buying it for yourself, you can write your own name there if you want. And then we get to the mandalas. This one came off a little bit, but we have the mandala and then a black page, and then a mandala, and then a black page. So this is going to be the Google Doc that I, when I was done, I downloaded as a PDF right there. And then we can upload that to Amazon and put it up for sale. So going back up here to the beginning, <coughs> the beginning, excuse me. So for the cover, the cover page, I believe I did that in Canva. Let's take a look. No, I just did that in Google Docs. So you just, you know, do some text, um, and then you can do insert image and align them up like that. It's pretty simple. If you're not familiar with Google Docs, plenty of tutorials out there. You can also use Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. I've heard, uh, of people using Adobe in design. So it's your choice uh, pretty, pretty much on what software you use. For the This Book Belongs To page, I did use Canva. So let's take a look at that over here. I created a design, custom size, eight and a half by 11 inches and then came up with this. Again, with Canva, tons of resources out there and tutorials if you're not familiar with it. So to create this page, clicked on elements and searched for horse mandalas. So I, I wanted some, just to decorate it a, a little bit. So you can click on these and add them over here. I think I went to graphics and see all. And you can just add these to your project. You can come over here and click on text to add your this book belongs to text and then for the line back to elements click on line and i found this line in here somewhere it's thinking it's thinking and you can say see all and i think this is the one i used but you, you can just kind of be creative and use your imagination. Once you're done with that, you can do share, download, download as PNG, come back to Google Docs, and in this page, you would do insert image, upload from computer, and find out where you saved it to and then open and it'll bring it in and you can resize that uh, uh, however you need, need it. So we also have to think about the margins for our, our document because the images and text need to stay within those margins. And Amazon tells us what our margins need to be depending on the size of our document. So our page count is under 150 pages. 
So the inside gut margin or the left margin needs to be 0.375 inches. And since we're using bleed, the top, right, and bottom margins also need to be 0.375. So it's 0.375 all around. So back over at Google Doc, I actually set the margins to zero because I needed the black pages to go all the way to all edges. So I just decided to look at the margins manually. So if you drag this over here, you see I got 0.38 there and 8.25 there. I believe that's enough. I might have to double check that. But basically we're within the margins. So let's quickly take a look at how I got the mandalas and the black pages into this document. So here's a new page. My cursors are all the way at the top. Go to insert image, upload from computer, and go to the ones that I actually used for the book. Just go with that one, open. And there it is. Now we need to size it down just a bit to be within our margin. So if we go to 0.38 and 0.38 over here, actually it's gonna be, let's see, what was it? 8.63. I forget the math on this, so it's 8.63 minus the, let's see, 8.63 minus 0.375. So bring that down to 8.25. There we go. Let's see. Over. Portion, so I hit control. The portions are still a little there, and then we're going to space it down. Let's get this back to eleven. And then I spaced it down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So that centers it vertically and horizontally, and it's within the margins. So there's the mandala. So now that we have to get the black page on the back of the mandala, the, the purpose of the black page is to, to, to prevent pens from sort of leaking through the page onto the next blank page. So let's take a look at that. Technically within Google Docs, you can go to File, Page, Setup, and change the background color of the page. Unfortunately, the, uh, the, the color, the page color here will apply to every single page of the document. We don't want that, so we can't do it this way. So we're gonna get out of here. And what I did was I, I created a, just a, a black rectangle image in Canva, uh, uh, the size of the document, 8.625 by 11.25. So we'll insert image, upload. 
And just have to remember where I put that. Let's see. There it is. Open that. And you'll notice that there's a little tiny sliver of white over here on the left and up here on the top. It might be hard to see on your screen, but we do need to fix that. So we'll click on the image, go down here, you click the three dots, all image options, and we want to do a couple things. We want to click on text wrapping, select wrap text, it's gonna make it disappear for a second, don't be alarmed. Then we're gonna go to position and set it to zero in both spots. And there, voila, the white spaces are gone and the black covers the whole page. So that's pretty much it for uh, creating the coloring book, putting it together. But there's one more thing we want to do to create our book, and that is to create a cover for the coloring book. So to start that, we would head on over to, where is it here? Bookow.com. And because we want to get a template that's going to help us create our book cover. So we'll click on KEP cover, and then you would do paperback, 8.5 by 11 page count. I think well, mine was 106. Uh, paper type white, we can leave this blank and this blank. And then you would just enter your email address twice and click email cover template. So they emailed me that template and I opened it up in GIMP. You can, you can use Photoshop if you want or any other graphic design program. So we have the template open. So I did the front cover as well as the back cover mandala in Canva. So you can see these by themselves. This was all done in Canva. And so was this. And after I saved them in Canva, I opened them up here in the GIMP and copied them and then pasted them in this in this file. So you have to follow the instructions on the template and, and they're pretty self-explanatory. So you just have to arrange your images. You don't want to cover up the barcode here. So I saved that as, so I exported it as a PNG. And then you can come over to, you can just search for PNG to PDF. Go here. Actually, I think I did the second one. I like that better. Yeah, the soda, the PDF work better. Choose your file. And I chose the ping wherever it was. And then it'll convert to a P PDF that you can download. And that uh, cover PDF is what we're going to need to upload to Amazon along with the book's interior pages. So now we want to get our files uploaded to Amazon so we can start to make sales. So if we go over to kdp.amazon.com, if you don't already have an account, 
go ahead and open one. It's a pretty uh, simple process. It's all free. You just enter your personal information, business info, um, if, if you got it, and uh, banking details so you can get paid and some tax information. So once that's all settled and you log into your dashboard, you'll see a create new button. That will bring you to a page that looks something like this. So let's get this. This is uh, the book that I already uh, uploaded. So we'll just run down it real quick. Language English. Did the book title, the book subtitle. You can skip series, skip edition. Uh, it, it wants you to enter an author name. I opted to uh, uh, go with a pen name and I had chat GPT uh, help me come up with one. So I entered that here. No other contributors. Here I did my description using the keywords that uh, I researched earlier. Look, I own the copyright, entered the keywords again here, chose a category, there's no adult content. So we can do save as next, or I'm sorry, save and continue. So on this page, we enter some more information for coloring books. We don't need an ISBN, so click publish without. Don't need a publication date because that, that'll be just the same day that you submit it or that it goes live. Did black and white interior with white paper, eight and a half uh, by 11 trim size. We do have bleed and it shows matte for the finish. And then you'll upload the manuscript, which is the, uh, the book interior that we did in Google Docs and then saved as a, a PDF. So you'll upload your P PDF and then down here for the book cover, you'll upload your book cover PDF. So now we get down here to the previewer. Now, this is where I have run into some challenges that I am still trying to solve. So it's very important that you look at the preview before you submit it because you want to fix any errors. So we'll launch preview. And we'll see that I have an error, insufficient gutter. Um, I thought I said that correctly. So I'm going to have to go back and double check the gutter. That's the left side margin. So obviously there's something wrong there. And I have to fix that before Amazon will let me upload it for sale. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we'll take a look at setting up some social media accounts to get the books out there and spread the word. So stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.